just heard a devotional song written to the Gautama Buddha more than 2,500 years ago. The Gautama Buddha, the Blessed One, attained Nirvana and left this world in peace. On the same day that the Gautama Buddha passed away, a violent vagabond king who was ousted from the Vangadesha arrived at a small island in a ship. He was banished by his father along with 700 unruly violent friends. Their heads were half shaven as a mark of punishment and they came to this island and they collapsed on the beach tired. When their hands touched the sand on that beach, they realized that their hands had turned the color of bronze because the sand in that island was the color of rose gold. So they gave this island the name Tambapanni, the Isle of Bronze. Later, some people called this island Lankadipa. Now they call it Sri Lanka. I will tell you the story about the parents and the grandparents of Prince Vijaya. Prince Vijaya, who was banished from India, was the son of King Singhabahu of the Vangadesha. King Singhabahu was the son of Queen Suppa, and they say the father was a lion. A lion? Yes. I will tell you the legend of the lion as it is written, adorned by the poetry of Sarachandra, a Singhala poet. So, Pri Queen uh, Supta, when she was a princess, was the, the daughter of the, of the king of the Vangadesha. She was so beautiful. Her hair just reached her knees in all blackness. She was doe-eyed. Her lips were like flowers. The fortune tellers told the king, this daughter of yours will one day be kidnapped by a beast. The king did not believe it. But one day, Princess Supta was travelling to Magadadesha in a caravan. And somewhere near the Latadesha, a beast, a lion, kidnapped Princess Supa. The father was horrified to hear this story. He went looking for it. He sent soldiers everywhere, but to no avail. Princess Supa, who was kidnapped by this lion, was taken to his cave. You'd think she would be upset. You'd think she would be sad, but no, the fortune tellers were right. The lion blocked the entrance of his cave with a big stone and blocked the entrance. Inside the cave, Princess Supa touched the golden hair of the lion. The lion touched the black hair of Supa. The lion touched the flawless face of Supa. Supa touched the bruised face of the lion and somehow they seemed to be in love. The more she lived in this cave with the lion, the more and more she fell in love with the lion. Somehow this is the only love she knew. As time went by, Supa had two children, twins, a girl and a boy, Singhabahu and Singha Sibali. Singha Bahu had strong arms like a lion and therefore called Singha Bahu. What about the lion? The lion loved his family so much. He hunted and gathered for him. He clothed his family in beautiful leaves and sheets and flowers. 
he watched them while they bathed he brought them flowers he showered with them with love for the lion taking care of his family and protecting the family was his version of love but there was trouble brewing in the cave which was always blocked with a big stone the growing singer bahu kept asking his mother mother what about those stories you tell about how royals live what about those stories you tell about the silk they wear what about those beautiful shoes they wear what about that music that the musicians sing but we have never heard mom what about the wonderful delectable food they eat which we have not eaten why are we living in this cave why why aren't we going out of this cave we are always in this cave blocked by a stone finally supa broke down and told her story to singa bahu and singa sibali she told her that this life she is leading is a life of love for her it means love for her singa bahu did not agree with it what sort of a punishment is this what sort of a life is this what's the meaning of this life this captivity what does it mean kumakto me paapi lene me visi me sitakto sepakto he asked he begged his mother let's run away from this cave let's run away from this lion who's keeping us captive who's taking away our freedom but supa did not agree but singa bahu one day with his arms as strong as a lion pushed the stone out and they were suddenly free he beseeched to his mother mother please let's go back to the royal household let's go and look for what is our due our inheritance so pa battled with her love and loyalty between the lion and the sun finally she agreed to go with singa bahu at that moment for for her that was love so singa bahu and singa sivadi and supa left the cave and started their journey and in the royal house of the latter country they were received with so much of love and singa bahu became so famous and so beloved for his spirit of fighting his strength and his beauty but what about the lion the lion came back to the cave and saw that the stone has been removed kallina pindala lindura harala singha ba singha ba my cave is open the door is broken singha ba ho singha ba ho he just screamed he said mama then gati me mama sek kale me singha ba singha ba singha ba i suspected you i had an inkling i knew you would do this singha ba ho singha ba ho he roared he looked for his daughter singha sivadi ma priya tiyaniya kavanniya puvanniya magena bivanniya vanai dukhak vidha asanniya swanniya singha sivali my fair daughter who loved me so much who used to worry about me who used to feed me who used to be around me really you left me too the lion wept lion was so sad with tears falling down his face but then after some time rage arose 
from within, he said, how dare you sing a Baho? How dare you challenge me? He was very, very angry. He convulsed with anger. He set on an impassioned journey to find his family. He went from village to village. He killed, beat, roared, shed blood. He destroyed villagers looking for his family. He went on and on from village to another and he was looking for his family. For the people who were looking at this lion, he was a lion gone crazy, but for the lion, he was just looking for his family. He was agonized, he was pained, he was sad. The king of the Latadesha heard that a mad lion was killing his people. He summoned Singhabahu and he told him, there is a lion threatening my people. You, Singhabahu, the warrior with arms as strong as a lion, will go and kill that lion. So Singhabahu set, on to set off on a journey to kill the lion, not knowing that it was his father. Finally, the lion met Singhabahu face to face. Singhabahu did not recognize the lion, but the lion immediately recognized Singhabahu from far away. He said, Singhabahu, my son, come and embrace me, my son. A lifetime of a misspent childhood flashed in front of Singhabahu. He hardened his heart. He took one arrow and he shot at the lion but he missed. The lion was confused. Here is my son. Why is he trying to kill me? He said, Singhabao, come, my love. I am your father. My love for you pierces my skin. My love for you traverses my flesh. My love for you sits on my bone. My love for you seeps into the marrow. And for as long as there is breath, my love, the love I have for you pains my cells, my atoms. Singhabahu, this is how fathers love their sons. Come and embrace me. But Singhabahu shot the second arrow and he missed. The lion looked at Singhabahu. Singhabahu looked at the eye of the lion. Singhabahu took the third arrow out and he aimed at his target. For a simple, single moment, anger and hatred like lava rose in the lion's heart. He thought, how dare you? And at that moment, the lava of his rage met the arrow of Singhabahu and the lion thought he saw a tear in Singhabahu's eye. The third arrow pierced the lion right in the middle of his heart. That is how Singhabahu killed a lion. That is how he killed his father. That is what the legend of the lion says.